This video is going to walk you through how I write blog posts. It's a simple process that I found saves a whole lot of time and um, I'm just going to show you literally what I do. Okay, So I have a um, tool that I use called MindMeister and what that does is that helps me create a, a mind map basically. So I'll create like a basic structure for the blog post. So for example, I might have like an intro and then I might talk about the mind map. Okay, add copy, add links. And then I'll schedule the post. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is I'll basically map out what I want this blog post to look like. Okay, in terms of the topics that I want to discuss. The next thing I want to do is export this into a text edit document. So I export the document in a text edit document outline. It's a very simple document outline. Okay, download that onto my computer. I open it up in text edit. So now I have it in text edit. And what I want to do is I'm going to make this simple, plain old text so that I can just write a little bit easier. I'm going to make the text a little bit larger. And for the intro, I might just say, one thing I found over the past few years of blogging is that having a process saves a lot of time and headaches, period. Following is a video demonstration of exactly what I do, comma, step by step, comma, for each blog post, period. To add the copy, I use the built-in speech translator in my Mac. All I have to do is double click the function button to start talking and then I click it once to stop, period. When my brain is done taking a dump, I will reread and edit what I've written, period. So once I finish editing, which you know might take a long time, a short time, what I'll do is I'll just grab all the text within the text edit document. I'm going to copy this and I jump over to WordPress. I go into my blog and I simply you know paste the copy into a blog post. Okay, so I'm going to click on posts, add new. There are a couple ways that you can you know paste text into a blog post. You can either use text mode, which it's in right now, so I'm just going to copy this. And I will grab the title, stick it up here. And the other option that you can do is you can always paste as plain text. You can use that. Okay. The next step in my process is that I'll look for the keywords. You know, so I want to do an SEO sweep. And um, I don't want to get too hung up on keywords though, because if I'm really trying to be useful to people, and be relevant and highly specific, then the keywords are naturally going to take care of themselves, right? But I might want to, you know, just double check and make sure that there's a prevalence of keywords at the beginning, make sure I'm picking appropriate tags, make sure that links, you know, the link that I'm making has keywords within the link. Uh, and then the next thing I do is I select tags and categories. I'm not going to get into details on that here because I have a, um, another article that I'll just point you to in this blog post. And then I add images, video. I typically add an image right at the beginning, right? Right at the top. And that same image is usually going to be a featured image as well on the site. A featured image is important because this is what most sites like Facebook will display as the thumbnail. So, and obviously you can choose different images when you do a Facebook post, a link particularly, and kind of scroll through what image you want from a particular web page. But generally what's going to dominate is the featured image. And the other quick tip I wanted to share is that I use a site called Photolia. If I want really nice images, I'll just go here, do a quick search. It might take me five or 10 minutes to find a decent photo. I'll license it. I have a, an account here. It might cost me a dollar, three dollars, 
you know, what, whatever it is, but it's not much more. I'm usually not spending more than $3. Sometimes I don't even need an image because I have an image that I've already created and I can maybe use that. But I try and find an image, especially at the beginning of a blog post, is, that's going to have some sort of impact emotionally to pull readers into the blog post. At least that's my, that's my theory on that. Okay. And then I add links. All right. Now, adding links to a blog post is pretty straightforward. You just highlight wherever you want to put a link and then use the functionality in, in your blog. But really what I focus on is, you know, do I want the links to go external? Do I want them to go internal? And it really does depend upon what I'm trying to do with the blog post. For example, if I have a webinar that's coming up and I want to promote the webinar, I might focus on, you know, a series of blog posts that link back to that information. And then the last thing I do is I schedule the post. I schedule it. For me personally, I found mornings generally work. It may not work for you. It might be nighttime. It really depends. So that's how I go through creating a blog post. And that is it. I will talk to you very soon. Okay, bye.